Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we have a 12.8 volt 100 amp hour battery from Cycling Bat. So we're going to go ahead and open it up and see what we have. Alright, when you first open your battery, you should expect a piece of styrofoam on top. And it's nice and thick, that's always good to see. And then we have a greetings from brand and a warranty card, a little package. And it's the greetings from brand, a getting started guide, uh, the product manual, and a warranty card. It comes with uh, two sets of post bolts. Uh, one, it looks like it's a little over an inch long, and the other one is about a half inch long, something like that. And then there's the battery. All right, I think it was last year I did a review on this Cyclone Bat battery, and I want to say that it performed very well. And honestly, I, I want to say that uh, I couldn't get it to shut off uh, when it comes to the high amperage test, but I don't know if I bumped it all the way up to its absolute max. But if I do remember, I couldn't get it to shut off after you know pumping like 150 or 200 amps into it. And you can see that this new battery is the exact same form factor. Um, it, it, it is a 12.8 volt uh, 100 amp hour mini, but there are a few changes to it. First of all, you can see on the front, this one says low temperature protection. So this one is really displaying the fact that it has low temp charging protection. And then on the back, it shows all the information for the battery. And it does that for both for both batteries. So we can easily see uh, the differences between these two batteries. Okay, as for the original, the discharge cutoff voltage was 10.6. Um, the max charge was 14.4. Uh, max in series is 48 volts, so four batteries in series. Uh, the maximum continuous charge current was 120. Uh, the, the maximum discharge current was 120. Uh, the peak discharge current was 300 amps for 5 seconds and the temperature range was negative 4 to 140 degrees of um, working temperature. And now on the new one, it shows that the discharge cutoff is 10 volts, so 0.6 volts lower. Uh, the max charge voltage is again 14.4. Again, you can put 4 in series for 48 volt pack. The maximum continuous charge current is dropped down to 100 amps, and the maximum continuous discharge current has been dropped down to 100 amps. Uh, the peak discharge current is still 300 amps for 5 seconds. And here at the bottom, it does show that the low temp charging protection starts at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and the low temp discharging protection starts at negative 8 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to be testing all of that just to make sure it all works. But the first thing you should do with your battery is go ahead and put a multimeter on it and make sure that you have the proper voltage. When you receive your batteries, they should be right around 50%. So that should be like about 13.1 to 13.2 volts. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, and the voltage is when you receive it, 13.31. So that's actually a bit higher than I expected. And then after you check the voltage to make sure it's working, Go ahead and put on a charger and charge it up all the way up to 14.4 to 14.6. And if you have the option, uh, I would go ahead and do a discharge test to make sure that you're getting the 100 amp hours that you paid for. So I'm going to go ahead and charge this up. I'll do a discharge test and I'll show you the results. All right, well, the capacity test is done for that 12 volt cycling bat battery. And let's go ahead and look at the chart. Uh, first of all, you can see that right off the bat, it, it lowers down to right about, uh, you know, 12.7 volts in the first 5%, which is totally fine. And then it stays, I mean, it stays above 12, all the way up to 90%. I mean, all the way up, actually to 95% of its capacity, it stays right between 12 volts and 12.7 volts. So that's excellent. And down here, you can see that the capacity is 103.31 amp hours. So above what they're uh, rating it for. So now let's go on to the high amperage testing. Okay, so let me show you what's going on with this high amperage test. 
We have our cycling bat 12 volt battery attached to this 5,000 watt pure sine wave inverter from MX Moonfree. Uh, I have an amp clamp right here so we can watch the amperage and I have the voltmeter right here so we can see the voltage of the battery during the test. I have a 200 watt heater. I also have a 1000 watt heat gun, a 1100 watt griddler, and a 1000 watt hot plate. So we'll be turning these all on in time. But for right now, we're just gonna turn this on, give it 100 amps uh, of continuous uh, discharge, and we're gonna run it for about five minutes just to make sure it doesn't have any issues with that. So let's begin. All right, we are pulling 101 amps. I set a timer and I'm gonna have it run for about five minutes and we'll see where we're at. All right, well, it's been five minutes and this battery has performed without any issue whatsoever. So we're gonna start cranking up the amperage. I'm gonna go ahead and send in another thousand watts. So that way we can kind of run it for, uh, we'll run it for like a minute at 200 amps. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Starting at 5.30, now. All right, we are now at 201 amps. And I just want to let you know, when I first started this test, when I first started the 100 amp test, the voltage of the battery dropped down to 12.75 from 13.4. And it lowered all the way down to about 12.67. And now with this 200 amps, uh, it is lowered down to 12.1 and our amperage is 203.8 amps. Now in my opinion, I don't feel like a battery that can do 100 amps continuous should be able to run 200 amps continuous for longer than a minute. And I think what they're doing is they don't have it trigger until that maximum of uh, this battery is going to be 300 for five seconds. Uh, and I think they rely on the internal temperature of the battery to turn off between that 100 amp max continuous and the 300 amps that they say will turn off on. That's because it's been over a minute now. It's almost a minute and a half and we're still pulling 204 amps with no problem. The voltage is down to 12.01. So let's go ahead and introduce a, another 1100 watts and this should turn it off after a few seconds so let's do it all right we are now at 311 amps our voltage is 11.47 and it's been over five seconds and this battery isn't turning off let's go ahead and click this on that's another 200 watts we're at 300 and 16 amps, 317, 318, 319, 320. The voltage is 11.27. 326. Let me just show you. Yeah, our amperage right now is lowering back down since the heater is getting all warm, but it's at 322 now. Voltage is 11.19. And the battery is starting to get a bit warm, but it's running it. It's running it, and there it turned off. And it was the battery that turned off, but it was longer than five seconds. So let's go ahead and turn all this off. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and test the low temperature charging protection on this Cyclone Bat battery. Uh, in the documentation, it does say that it won't charge anything under 32 degrees. So we're gonna to try to get as close as possible to that to see if it will trigger. And what I have here is my ice cold portable refrigerator. We're gonna set that to 30 degrees Fahrenheit. And this thing is going to be powered by my All Powers R1500. So let's go ahead and put the battery in there and set it down. All right, well, it has been about 26 hours since I put this battery in this cooler and set it to get chilled. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out. I'm going to put it right on a charger and we're going to see if it does have low temperature charging protection. So here we go. All 
Okay, right now the charger is flashing green. That means that it is on standby. What's going to happen is once I put these on the connections, it will go to a solid red, but it should only stay a solid red for like one to two seconds. And then after that, it will go a solid green because the battery told it to shut off. So let's go ahead and try it. Here we go. Solid red. And solid green. Perfect. That is exactly what you want when your battery has low temperature charging protection. And this cooler was set at 30 degrees Fahrenheit. That is about as close as I want to get to that 32 degree Fahrenheit uh, cutoff switch for this battery. So perfect. All right, and if you were all wondering at all, this Iceco had been running for 26 hours at 30 degrees Fahrenheit, and it was running on this All Powers R1500. Uh, the All Powers started at 100%, it is now down to 75%. So it took 25% of that R1500 to power this ice co at 30 degrees for 26 hours. Just a little uh, tidbit, just in case you wanted to know. But anyway, what do I think of this cycling bat? Uh, well, I mean, it passed the capacity test. It gave us, it gave us 100 amps continuous with no problem. Um, I believe that it's not really set to shut off until it gets over 300 amps continuous. And again, it didn't take five seconds. I wanna say it took like, I don't know, maybe 15 or 20 seconds before this thing decided to shut off. Uh, the low temperature charging protection works flawlessly. I believe it says if it goes below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, the battery will not charge anymore, and that's exactly what it did. I like the fact that it's nice and light. And also the fact that it's a mini. So, I mean, it's very easy to handle and carry around for 100 amp hours. So if you have any questions about the Cyclone Bat 12 volt, 100 amp hour, low temperature charging protection battery, go ahead and leave them in the comments. Uh, I'll have this battery and everything else I used in my description, just in case you wanna look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.